Poseidon, Atlantis, lots of things lay at the bottom of the sea, including these mysterious shipwrecks. So here are the top 10 historical shipwrecks you won't believe. Number 10, Graf Zeppelin. I wouldn't blame you if you never heard of this beast, but back in the 1940s, aircraft carriers were all the rage, combining the air support and air superiority of airplanes and the naval capabilities of a large ship. They were effective and kind of defined that era. That being said, these bad boys were extremely expensive and tough to build. The Graf Zeppelin was to be the cornerstone of the German naval power, except it never really saw any use. By the end of 1945, Germany was sitting in the timeout corner yet again, and the Soviets, well, not having their own aircraft carrier, thought, why not borrow the keys? Makes sense. Well, the test drive just wasn't working out, so they decided to use it as target practice. The large vessel now rests 260 feet below the Baltic Sea and was only discovered in 2006. It's kind of cool. Number nine, the Bismarck. More German naval power flexing. The Bismarck was one of two battleships meant to show off that Germany, ooh, meant, ugh. Business. Massive ships with a length of 251 meters and a crew of almost 2,000. She was a beast of the seas. After engaging in only a few military operations, her legend quickly made the Royal Navy shiver in their timbers. Who can blame them? And they wanted this thing sunk, and they wanted it sunk bad. So it was time to hunt the Bismarck. And after enough chasing and drama to write a small novel, which I'm pretty sure there's a few, the Bismarck was caught between a rock and a hard place. A well-placed torpedo had given the German giant some serious damage. Damage, enough that it was decided that they should scuttle the ship to prevent British from boarding. Regardless of what happened, she now rests at the bottom of the ocean. Number 8, the Nimai ships. Emperor Caligula was a dude who loved his opulence, but he had his own version of the Jabba the Hutt barge from Return of the Jedi. Pretty sweet. Magnificent pleasure cruises with all the amenities that you think a Roman emperor would have. These ships seemed to be lost to time, or at least that was thought. Rumors had spread that Lake Nimai was the final resting place of these legends. Even folks back in the 1400s were curious about such wrecks, as not only did they discover them, but tried to recover them. Sadly, they just didn't have the technology to do so. It wasn't until a certain square-jawed Italian leader and fascismo and his compadres came about the ship that it would see light again. Pretty cool. However, sadly, during an explosive discussion with the US Artillery Corps, the ships were destroyed in WW2. Pretty cool though, pretty cool. Number seven, the Yamato. You didn't think the Germans were the only bad boys in the ocean with a big old battleship, did you? Well, think again, Buster. The Yamato is the story of Imperial Japanese pride during the 40s and its downfall. Shortly commissioned after Pearl Harbor, she was a gem of Japanese power and status. However, if you didn't skip history class and you came here for history, which thank you, I appreciate that, you'd know that things for Japan, bit by bit, eh, got a little worse for them. It all went downhill after the Battle of Midway. Ever since the Battle of Midway, they were on the back of their heels. By 1945, Japan was running low on, well, just about everything but willpower. They are they, pretty impressive fighters. Somehow, this massive battleship had yet to be sunk. Its final orders were to beach itself at Okinawa and prepare for a defense until it was destroyed. And if you know anything about the Japanese, it's that they are not quitters. Eventually, she was destroyed and lost most of her crew. She now rests at the bottom of the ocean as well. You're, you're gonna find a lot of these are at the bottom of the ocean. You're gonna, that's just gonna happen. Number six, the Endurance. Here's a recent discovery for you, and it's actually very cool. The Endurance was a ship helmed by Ernest Shackleton, an explorer in the time of explorers. An explorer's explorer, if you will. He was taking a decent sized vessel and modest crew to explore the cold waters of Antarctica. How well did that go? Well, the ship was thought to be lost for over a hundred years. So, yeah, it it didn't go very well. The ship got caught in packed ice and it eventually sunk. However, everyone lived, so there's, hey, that's we like that, that's good. Nice. Well, in March of 2022, not that long ago, it was announced that the ship had been found. Look how good that ship looks for being over 100 years old and sitting at the bottom of the ocean. Supposedly, it's been well preserved because of the cold temperatures. Titanic wishes it looked that good. It don't, but it do, but it wishes. Number five. The Queen Anne's Revenger. Avast, sea land lovers! It'd be the ship of the most fearsome pirate to ever set sail on the seven seas. Blackbeard, the pirate's pirate, and what would a pirate be without his ship, right? The Queen Anne's Revenge was a ship to be reckoned with. With an estimated 40 blam lambs, it would put a hole in your sail, so to speak. Blackbeard was part of the golden age of piracy, the very same that makes you think about pirates and booty. 
and Johnny Depp. Remember how hot he was in the 80s, right? Right, ladies? He's gorgeous. Anyway, the Queen Anne's Revenge was found in 1996 just off the coast of North Carolina. 24 blam limbs have been recovered since, all of different weights, sizes, and origins, which adds to the evidence. When you're a pirate on the run, you can't exactly just walk into the uh, cannonade store and ask for some more nautical blam blams. You kind of got to take them wherever you can get them. Number four, the SS Edmund Fitzgerald. SS Edmund Fitzgerald was an American Great Lakes freighter that sank in Lake Superior during a storm on November the 10th, 1975, with the loss of the entire crew of 29 men. When launched on June 7th, 1958, she was the largest ship on North America's Great Lakes, and she remains the largest to have sunk there. She was located in deep water on November 14th, 1975, by U.S. Navy aircraft detecting magnetic anomalies, and found soon afterwards to be in two large pieces. Ooh, not, not, not a thing you want your ship to be in. If you've ever been to Lake Superior or any of the Great Lakes for that matter, you know sometimes the water there can be a little rough. As a Canadian, I've spent my fair share on most of the Great Lakes and, well, you kind of got to be there to see them. They feel like seas more than lakes to be honest and surprisingly deep at certain points, like stupid deep. The tragedy of the Edmund Fitzgerald even got the Gordon Lightfoot treatment in what is probably the best folk slash story song ever written. Goes to show you even in modern times, the life of a sailor sure ain't easy. Number three, the USS Arizona. It was a peaceful day just like any other on December 7th, 1941, and not a day that would live in infamy at all at the Pearl Harbor Naval Base in Hawaii. When all of a sudden, Japanese planes came barreling out of the sky and unleashed a deliberate attack on the base, destroying ships and fuel reserves, including the USS Arizona. Thousands of people lost their lives, and now America was involved in Japan's world tour. Our American audience knows all about this, or at least I hope so. You might be studying for a test right now, but I'm here to help. However, this may be news to some who live outside the greatest country on Earth, or so I'm told. The USS Arizona sunk that day, and it remains there. There's even an interesting memorial that you can visit that basically sits over top of the wreck from a time long past. While this was a major blow to US Navy power at the time, the US would come back kicking strong and eventually push Japan all the way back home. They, 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 get, they, they got it back, fair and square, I think. Number two, USS Maine. Blame the Maine on Spain, they said in early 20th century propaganda regarding what to do with the lovely island of Cuba. A US ship had gone boom boom in the Havana Harbor and it was exactly what the US needed as a scapegoat to give them some more manifest destiny. And who does, we all love that. Everyone loves manifest destiny. Except it might not have been the Spanish who destroyed the ship. It might have been on purpose or an accident. However, this shipwreck is important for a couple reasons. One, a war started after this which historians can take note of the beginning of imperialist American ideals in Central America. And this was also the war where the one and only Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders got his fame from. So it can't all be that bad, right? It can't be that much of a loss. America ends up with more territory and they get Teddy Roosevelt. That's just a win-win in my books. Number one, the Santa Maria. It's the ship that discovered America. Good old Christopher Columbus. Imagine a world without America. No apple pie, no George Washington, and no freedom. Oh. I wouldn't want that. How would we ever get on without Hollywood, McDonald's, or our obsession with reality TV? I love you, America. And thank you, Christopher Colum... Okay, well, maybe not thank him, actually. America, yes. Chris, no. The dude was actually kind of rotten. Ugh, we're looking back now, he wasn't so nice. Like, a lot of people weren't back then. The Santa Maria sunk back in 1492 and was salvaged for wood for a base of some sort. I was gonna say, it belongs in a museum. But Chris wasn't exactly the nicest guy, so maybe it's better the ship's gone. Plus, we all know and love a much better Chris anyway. Our Chris. He's... We love that guy. He's great. He's awesome. Yeah. That's going to wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you, too, want to explore deep sea wrecks with me, then check out my social somewhere down below. I stream sometimes on the weekends on Twitch. It's fun. I'm funny sometimes. It's, it's a great time. I love you guys so much. And stay sweet, my little honeybees. I'll see ya. Oh, excuse me. No, we're good. Okay, now if I push the hard back, she's going to sh** my pants, so. Oh, God. And then I said, no. <laughs> Oh my god! What did you say? Did you say? Let me hear it. Hold on. There. <laughs> oh, I feel so much better now after that. It wasn't that loud as I thought it was <laughs> It's gonna be, dude. We had we had a nice lunch today and I just I was sitting down at the desk going, oh must uh, Oh excuse me. That's the spaghetti. Buddy had his own version of Job of the Hub Bar. Huh? What? Did you say something? No. They said, oh I thought I just I heard some. Never mind. Sorry, Chris. I'm going gun looking butts! <laughs>